I'm here at the Green Chemistry Conference to give a talk on chemistry that we've been developing at Michigan State University for a number of years. Uh, and it is chemistry that's being commercialized currently by Borofarm, a startup company located in Ann Arbor, Michigan, uh, and a company that has the capability of uh, carrying out the chemistry that you'll see in just a second at scales ranging from milligrams all the way up to multiple, multiple kilograms. Suzuki cross-coupling reactions are an incredibly important reaction to the pharmaceutical industry, agrotech, uh, the organic LED market as well. These reactions involve uh, the coupling of a boronic ester as well as an electrophile to form a new carbon-carbon bond. This is an SP2-SP2 uh, union uh, to form a new sigma bond. Cross-coupling reactions have been said to account for 58% of all of the carbon-carbon bonds being performed in the pursuit of drug discovery. Uh, as important as this reaction is, it's not without some green chemistry problems. The reaction is extremely uh, uh, sensitive to and in need of halogenated aromatics. For example, the halogenated aromatic is typically used as the electrophile, uh, but also the boronic ester that's used. This reaction, or this compound is also typically generated from halides. Halides, of course, are, uh, have their own inherent uh, environmental baggage. They can be toxic, and you have to prepare them. And sometimes preparing those halides can be quite problematic. Because of this, the American Chemical Society's Green Chemistry Institute's Pharmaceutical Roundtable, uh, a group of companies brainstormed, and they declared reactions that were uh, cross-couplings that would avoid the preparation of haloaromatics to be their number one aspirational reaction. Now, of course, if you'd like to uh, get rid of the halogen, the easiest way to do this is to do what would be considered a CH activation reaction. CH activation reactions are a challenge, certainly, because these reactions demand the activation of an otherwise unactivated carbon-hydrogen bond, as well as having uh, selectivity challenges. How does one activate one of the hydrogens in the presence of a molecule that contains many carbon-hydrogen bonds? Of course, there are ways to do orthometallations if the R group is appropriately positioned and appropriately functionalized. But if it's not, this is a true challenging CH activation problem. Fortunately, at Michigan State University, my colleague Mitch Smith, an inorganic chemist uh, in our department, was the first to breach this challenging problem. He discovered that iridium catalysts and a boron source, such as pinnacle borane or B2 pinto, are capable of doing exactly the desired reaction, that is a CH activation, correlation reaction, of otherwise unactivated CH bonds. This work was first published in 1999, followed up by a paper in, in 2000. Many other groups have also joined the effort in, to establish these reactions as really a, a groundbreaking way and a, a new way to make uh, bronic esters practiced widely throughout the chemical industry, both in pharma, agrotech, and again, more recently, in the OLED market. One of the keys about these reactions is that the selectivity of these reactions is, is, is exquisite. One sees high chemoselectivity, so a variety of functional groups, stereogenic centers, et cetera, can survive. The other issue here is that the weed geochemistry, where that boron winds up, is it complements, I should say, traditional electrophilic aromatic and nucleophilic aromatic substitution reactions. The boron, in these cases, wants to wind up at positions that are not sterically encumbered. So it can uh, allow us access to what we would call contra-electronic substitution patterns. That is, the boron will wind up meta, as you see in the amino acid case, to uh, groups that are normally ortho paradirectors. This allows us to make a variety of these tri- and tetra-substituted, contra-electronically substituted areas. As was noted in a very interesting paper, a number of contra and, and tri, uh, tri and tetra substituted uh, areas have very challenging substitution patterns, even though they can look seemingly simple. And because of this, they can be difficult to access, they can be expensive. This chemistry obviates some of those challenges and makes these compounds readily available. The other thing is that the compound, the, the chemistry works very well with heterocycles. Heterocycles have a little bit more nuance when they work and where the boron winds up. But again, the key is that it often gives us access to, if you will, otherwise, under traditional chemistry, impossible substitution problems. Because of this, uh, our group was honored to win the 2008 US EPA Presidential Green Chemistry Challenge Award. 
Uh, and it's a big an honor as this was. What was really gratifying is to see that this chemistry was also able to make its way into the industry. Boro Farm is a company, again, as I said, located uh, in Ann Arbor, Michigan, but has access to pilot plant facilities in Holland, Michigan. And because of this, Boro Farm has been able to take this chemistry, run this chemistry on kilo upon kilo uh, scale reactions, and make some of these very challenging uh, compounds. Again, from milligrams to kilograms, Boro Farm now makes, has a catalog containing over 500 of these otherwise difficult source boronic esters and allied building blocks. And so that's the, the story today. Thank you very much.